<laughs> All right. So, so legally, Leo Clark doesn't get you very far. Yes, I'm Leonardo Ribeiro. <laughs> Leonardo Ribeiro. I mean, that, <laughs> to me, that sounds cool, right? <laughs> okay. Leonardo Ribeiro. <laughs> Maybe I should change my artistic name. Uh, so, Leo, thank you for coming in today. Welcome to the show. Thank uh, you. I'm, I'm keen to chat with what we're going to talk about here. Uh, I'm interested in film. I'm interested in NFTs uh, and also some of the, the social media tech that actually you got me into just in the last week or so. So let's start with the film. Cool. Can you can you tell us about it? I'll just say here, the, the U.S. premiere is coming up. Yes. Uh, so by the time this comes out, it'll probably be in a couple of days. Um, after and this is the American Documentary and Animation Film Festival, and that's going to be in California. Yes. Can you tell us about it? Palm Springs, California, March twenty second. March twenty second. Yeah, Will yeah. you be going? Ah, uh, no, unfortunately, no. Okay, yeah. but your work is traveling. Yes, there. it's our film is there. That's what matter, right? Well, thank you for having me. This is great to be here, and. The film, I should start with the film, right? It's um, a documentary about Dean Harvey. He's an NFT pixel artist from Nelson, New Zealand. And I found out about him because of Nows, which is a, a whole other topic we should talk about. For sure. But the, the, the goal of the film is to show how NFTs are changing people's lives, especially artists. And that's what the story is about. He used to be like a, an editor, like a freelance guy, filming and editing. And he got into NFTs and he did well. He's a great pixel artist and he made a, a living out of it. So. And so you share a similar background in that sense? You know all about editing yourself? Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I can feel his pain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, I mean, so I, I've seen the film. I saw it once last year. Uh, you posted it up and you recently let me view it again. And I mean, tell us about Dean. Like, he seems like such a such a down to earth Kiwi guy. He seems like a bit of a nerd as well. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's the type of uh, story that I'm really uh passionate about he's like he's really he, he didn't know what it was he, he didn't he didn't even know what the blockchain was yeah right so he heard about it that some friends were doing well selling nfts and he actually went through like four, three to four months of just research you know just learning uh, the technology you know and i love the that moment that most of us have when we first get into the crypto space and the, the crypto money becomes like real money. Like, <laughs> so he sold his first NFT. I was like, what is this? And then is in his bank account. And it's like, wow, this is real. And then he just kept on going, you know, like, and like with most successful stories, this is dedication and work, right? He really spent time like just making art. Uh, I recently... Um, watched an interview with Jack Butcher and he has a great line like you want to do good art just make more art you know like yeah and that sounds to me like what Dean did you know like he kept at it you know so and so did you see his work and you thought like how, how did you how did you turn into how did you like you ring him up and you're like hey my name's Leo can I can I come <laughs> Yeah. Make a film about you? That's exactly what happened. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it all goes back to nouns. I was in, I was being a part of the community in the nouns Discord since September 2021. And slowly those, slowly some projects start to get funded. And most of the people getting funded are either artists or developers. Because that's what crypto and NFTs are mostly about. Right. But surely some media and social media and film and more of what I do, filmmaking uh, projects were starting to come up, to, to show up. And, but I didn't know what can I do here in New Zealand, you know, like who can I, I'm, I'm the only p person in now here in New Zealand, who am I going to talk to, you know? <laughs> 
And then I found out that Dean had done a project called Now Cats. Now Cats. Now Cats. Yeah. Which is a, a like a sub DAO, like a. a, a since now the CCO, you can just grab the assets, take the code, and do whatever you want with it. And Dean got together with Backseat, which is a developer, and they launched a brand new PFP project based on Nows, using the, the Nows assets and doing a, a version of Cats, basically. <laughs> which is, that's such a classic NFT thing to do, right? Like, yeah, exactly. It's, it's a remix. <laughs> there you go. And... Yeah, and and that's when I that's when I realized that that's the guy I'm looking for, and obviously I I reached out. I, we had uh, like a long phone call, and uh, and I, as we as we kept talking to each other, and I'm studying his work. It all made sense, you know. He's a really cool guy, and and I love his work. You know? And so, what do you highlight in the documentary? You, you go through this journey of like starting. He did the noun cats before he met you? Yes. Uh, and then what was he working on when you got to him? He was working, well, by, by the time I actually went down to Nelson to talk to him, the crypto and NFT space actually went down, right? And, but he kept working on his 101s and like experimenting and he never, stopped selling art as far as I know. Sometimes there are better times, sometimes there are slower times, but he never stopped, you know. And is it, I, I saw the credits, so I know there's a few people that helped you here, but are you like a sort of a, just a one man production company? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The thing is that I was funded in Ethereum and I left uh, the funds in Ethereum. Right, you didn't convert them to I dollars. I didn't convert into dollars straight away. And it was a week before the, the major crash, like June 22. <laughs> so the budget went from 60,000 to 20,000. Oh no. That was bad. So that's why it took so long to, to make the film. I said, what am I gonna do? So I, I got the interviews out of the way, I say like the main interview, but the soundtrack, the visual effects, yeah. The, that I had to wait. <laughs> and so you're organizing all of this yourself? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm director producer. Yeah, okay. If I had the full budget, maybe I'll get a friend or a partner yeah. producer to help me out. But And it's your vision then that is yes. now going to be it. So what what's it like? I've never, you know, made something and sent it to a film festival. What's that what's that process like? And like what do you hope to get out of it? Yeah, that's what not only with the festival, but with the film and everything that I do, I realize that I'm always trying to show people what this is. You know, I want more people to be into crypto, NFTs, and now, you know, yeah. and now forecaster as well. Yeah. And so I try to tell inspiring stories so that people at least get curious about and go check, check it out, you know, go experiment themselves, you know, and maybe join the movement. I mean, the the crash, that's such a crypto-specific problem, right? Yes. Like, yeah. get access to funds. Yeah. Obviously, they come in kind. Uh, and then you never know what's just around the corner. Uh, you know, treasuries have this problem as well, right? Yeah. Where they have token allocations. Uh, and yes. then they have big plans. And sometimes big plans take a long time. And we don't know what the market is going to hold in the future. Yeah. Um, like being able to transition from having, you know, peak cycle hype and being like, yes, I can do all this stuff. And then, oh, but it's going to take me six months to do it, for example. Right. Uh, and like, so did you just, did you just sort of cut things out? Did you like? Yeah, I didn't. I just, <laughs> I just, wait. Uh, I was like uh, naive and I was, uh, I was in awe of Perfect. the script. To refer so I, yeah. I never thought to bother to, to change to, to to trade that into dollars and I was like crypto is a beautiful magic I just left it there and it was really fast like a week so I just waited yeah and 
like a, like you asked about uh, instead of having a producer i did everything yeah. myself and it, it all went way slower than i would like to but by this time you had already come up on like the cyclical nature of crypto and you were confident in the asset to hold it and not panic sell yeah exactly yeah, yeah. like if i had to get on a if i had to get on a plane and go see D dean and actually film the interview i just sold but it actually never came back I finished the film with Ethereum way down. So. Way down. I mean, the Ethereum Foundation, they famously sold Ether in their foundation at the top mm -hmm. uh, to fund the foundation. And so there's like um, transcripts of like Vitalik, you know, conversations online of like Vitalik talking to people being like, I th you know, I think we should sell, convert some of this ETH into dollars uh, during the bubble. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they made the right decision and that sort of, has propelled them into the, and so other foundations, I mean, this is a, I guess this is a problem for like managers of treasuries is what assets do we hold? Do we diversify and things like this? But when you're like an independent creator and like, yeah. like, like that's just one other thing that, that, yeah. so have you done any NFT art yourself? NFT art? Actually, yes. Because what happens is I, I keep on trying to experiment with many things. Everything usually related to nows, that's where I spend most of my time. And at some point, nows had a nows AI, which was like an engine similar to Mid Journey that would spit out okay. uh, AI yeah. art. And uh, the developers behind it were able to encode the the noggles, like the now symbol, the square glasses. So it was the only AI generating uh, software that could put noggles on stuff. So you would put like, a, I don't know, a monkey with, with noggles. And yeah. So, and they actually got it to the point where you can make uh, short films in it. So I was like, what? I, I like generated yes. short clips. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, it, it's, for some reason they stopped. I don't know exactly the reason why, which is sad because I, I loved it. Uh, so I could upload a song, generate images, and place them in a timeline, and the software, the AI thing, would generate the, the, soft, the, the images in between. So I started to make little short films, with animated short films with AI art. With your music? Uh, Not necessarily any music? Yeah, any music, yeah. any music, exactly. And you've got like these markers exactly. that... I don't know, indicate some... Yeah, you, you put a song in there. It was like a short, maybe 30 to one minute yep. music piece. And then you generate the, as many uh, pictures as you want. And then you place them on a timeline. And in between, the software would figure out the animation necessary. So I was having a blast, you know, like yeah. coming up. I, I, I would actually compose, on, I would edit the whole sound not just the music, but sound effects, and make it ready, and then place the image exactly. So if I, if it was a, a meteor hitting a, a sand dune, I had the explosion of the sand on the audio already. So it was a beautiful tool. You should and, you should revive it if. Yeah, I mean. If the, it's dormant right now. Yeah, but they have to 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 bring it back up. But. Uh, so tell tell us about nouns. All right, nouns is what pretty much changed my life in crypto. So it was early, it was September 2021. They launched on mainnet on August 2021. I tried to explain nouns for people who uh, understand what an NFT is and what a PFP project is. So I like to say that CryptoPunks, they created the art form and board, the Bored Apes are the most famous PFP project. They created what I see as like a business model layer on top of that thing. Right. Because you, you get many perks, you, be a, you become a part of a, like a club, and you can make a brand out of your ape or something. And w the three things that nouns did differently, in my opinion, are first is a 24-hour auction a daily auction for each NFT, instead of releasing 10,000 at once, is one a day. So it's gonna take 27 years 
more or less to get to 10,000. So they have scarcity. And at the same time, you spread the window of time where people can join. Right? You can join now. It's three years later, you can still join yeah. now. Like the first Which is guy. like a stone age length of time yeah. in crypto, right? Exactly. And so they've been going one a day since One a day the since. Okay. And then there is no IP rights. Everything is CC0, copyright free. So the idea initially was to spread the meme, like they want to proliferate the meme. So they want the square glasses to go everywhere. So anyone can make a brand out of the square glasses or any of the art in nouns and make money out of it, it's fine. And the third element, which is the most revolutionary maybe, is that the 10 founders created the project and the money, the sales from the, the NFT sales, the, the, the money doesn't go to them. It goes to, into a treasury that can be accessed by anyone with an idea. You propose, and each now is a vote, either yes or no, for each proposal to, to get the funding that you want for your idea. So that's the size of the community. If you have a noun, you can vote. Is that right? If, exactly. If okay. you have a now, you can actually put a proposal up for voting, and each now is a vote, either yes or no, to make a proposal pass or not. And I think it's a thousand something proposal. I could be wrong. I, I can check. So it's like your uh, your entry pass into the community is to buy the noun or mint the noun, watching daily to find one that you like at a good price, maybe. Get yourself a noun, and then you're allowed to participate in the proposal and voting the community governance? Yes, but that's actually not the most important part. Uh, usually you don't get to watch and choose because they're highly... They're way cheaper now, but they're always like <laughs> fought off. You cannot... You don't get to choose. You have, you have to bid higher. You have no? to, I, I so, look to... Today and yes, yesterday's noun went for like over five ETH. Yeah, which is a, it's really a different time that we're living. It used to be like 100 to 100 ETH each. So it was a different moment for sure, but it never stopped. But the most important thing is this. You need a noun to either propose or to vote, but anyone can propose because you can get someone with a noun to sponsor your proposal. Okay. That's the that's real... Uh, revolution here because i don't have a noun yeah i have some friends and you I... didn't spend 200 ETH on a noun <laughs> no you don't no. have to answer <laughs> no not yet yeah <laughs> and one day i will and but so you have friends or you have people that you know and you ask them for a favor and they put your proposal up for voting and that's how anyone literally can have a proposal up for voting you know and on top of that, that I re this is so common now that people don't talk about it. But in the beginning, they were like, this is too slow. We need f to find faster ways to spend this money. You know, like, there was a lot of okay. money. You know? yeah. And so they started Prop House, which was a w it's still going. It's, 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 it's in different formats today, but it's an easier, easier entry-level proposal platform, you know, like, you come, they have the prize, like a weekly 5 ETH prize, and you come with the idea, and people vote, and it's a fast process. It's, it's for smaller amounts, but it's faster, it's more dynamic, and it's allowing people, like, all you need is an ETH address, connect your wallet, and post your idea. Yep. And if the community likes it, you get funded, you know, like... So as a, I, I mean, I guess there's a few things happening here, right? They want to grow, you want to grow the community and you're, you're aiming for some sort of like fair distribution of the treasury, which I think is very, very admirable. A lot of projects, tokens, blockchains don't have anywhere near this. Um, and so I, I guess my thought, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts here. So I, I didn't know all this about the nouns project, right? I had seen the square glasses and I was uh -huh. like, ah. PFP project yeah. next, right? And I might have seen the high prices at one point and been like, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I didn't realize all this happening in the background. Um, and then my, my next thought was like, one a day seems slow. 
right? Especially if you're trying to like get people into the community. Um, and like, what do you what do you think about that? I guess that's where this alternate proposal style comes in. Prop house? Yeah. Yeah. No, pro they were. I remember the community. They were worried. That it's too slow. We need to find faster way to spend money and to invest in in people. And I think there was even another one called Small Grants. It was like a, just a channel on Discord, and you reached out to the guy who yeah. had control okay. of this. <laughs> hey, can you give me two ETH? I, I have this idea here. Yeah. And, but I think they want to spread, like proliferate the meme, but there's a cultural thing as well of being weird like quirky and funny and like square glasses, pixelated images, and to do good with no expectation of return. Okay. And that was not like written like in a manifesto or anything. It's just something that slowly uh, happened. So the first proposals to get funded were like, just give money to charity. And then there's some weird stuff like, let's name a frog. Like, sci like a new species? Yeah. Okay. A scientist in Colombia, I don't know, in the Amazon, they found a, a new species of frog and they put up a, like a kickstarted kind of a thing to like f raise some funds to help their research. At the yeah. same time, you get to name the frog and now's won the thing. You know? <laughs> this is like the, the, or I'm thinking of like the boat naming competition in yeah. uh, the UK and we got Bodie McBoatface oh, really? for the name of the research vessel. Oh. Um, in terms of letting the community to decide something. Um, what what other examples have you seen? Of, and then we'll get to yours yep. um, in terms of projects that have been funded. And then on the charity side of things, they were like, they made actual eyeglasses for underprivileged kids in the U.S. Okay. And then and the, the animation, the, the art side, when the art took off, like, any artist in the beginning, like any artist who would join the Discord and start a drawing like on their own style, like a variation of the Nows art, they would get praised and like they would release works and people would buy and they would get funded to get to make like a kids coloring book. All kinds of things started happening straight away. You know, and that was really inspiring to see. They had, they, my kid won like third place on a coloring contest. All right. And he got like $2,000. He goes to school and he tells that he bought his Xbox with his own money because of a coloring. Because he entered a coloring contest. And people don't That's believe That's a great him. story. <laughs> they go, nah, what do you mean $2,000? That's great. So. All yeah. because you knew about nouns yeah, and you knew this. Because the, the prize was half an E. And this, half an yeah. ETH back then was $2,000. Yeah. And I was like, good job. You got yourself an Xbox. And uh, and so how did Nouns end up funding you? You put in a proposal? Or? Yes. Yeah. So I finally uh, got the courage to propose thanks to Finding Dean and think that this is related to Nouns. And people like like Brandon, the, the, the friend that sponsored the proposal, was really like, this is great. Do you need help? And I said, yes, please. And he put it up for vote and the community voted for and that was the start, you know. Okay, and do you are you expected to like report back or like? That's like yeah, what what happens after or next or that's now? That's a great question. There is not a lot of accountability because yeah. especially prop house, small grants, and more projects every time. But it's a self-adjusting, that's governing thing. You, you give updates to the community. Some people care. Not everybody cares, but. There's no like a, a fixed mechanism where yeah. you you put the proof of that's more central planning, isn't it? Like is, uh, yeah. end of the quarter, submit your report. <laughs> exactly. So, but yeah, you, it's it's actually the opposite. I want them to be happy about the film, so yeah. I post updates whenever I have. I'm really happy to to have the film in a f festival in the U.S. and obviously talk about that there and. I, uh, invite them, whoever, lots of them are in the U.S., maybe some of them will be there at yeah. the premiere. You know? very, very good. Um, well, congrats on 
the entry and uh Thank you. will will there be like tier judging awards afterwards i think so there there, there might uh, yeah, be but okay yeah. we'll we'll have to see yeah see how that goes um when i first looked you up on let's say twitter mm -hmm. um i found i have found something you wrote i don't know what it was it doesn't matter but you led me to farcaster and warpcast yes uh and I've spent a little bit of time there in the past few days, sort of looking around, messaging you, <laughs> um, seeing a little bit of the community here in New Zealand. There is a NFT Aotearoa channel. Yes. Correct me if I if I got that name wrong. And so then, you know, I just started doing a little bit more. I had heard of Farcaster and sort of the other day asked you to explain it. So can yeah. you bring it? Bring me up to speed on uh, decentralized social media and Farcaster and Warpcast. Sure. Yeah, it's it's first nouns changed my life and then Farcaster changed my life again. Because in the, the easy way to explain is like crypto Twitter, it's like a Twitter, but for crypto people and it's decentralized, like Elon cannot take you out of the platform yeah. or, or censor you. And but what got me into Farcast, first of all, is that the like button, if you post a noun square glasses on your post, on your cast, the like button becomes that noun's glasses. So okay. it was like a really friendly place right from the start, right? And in the end, what happens there, in my opinion, is that it's a, a more friendly environment. I, I tried to, I, I ended up, I realized that the cool kids building the future of crypto and blockchain are all there. That's my gut feeling, you know. They're experimenting, they're creating games, they're creating new ways to interact. There are many ways to, to get paid, not to, to get rewards for just posting. You can yeah. give some warps or can tip them degen, which is like the... This is the dream, right? This is the, not, the criticism of big social media and the dream is that you know, individual creators that are adding value to the platform can somehow get some of that pointed back at them. Exactly. That's a, that's a great point. The, instead of the the big uh, corporations monetizing on your con on your content on Farcaster, you can easily monetize your content or just get paid for playing games. Actually, there are a lot of betting games going on there, and a lot of innovation. I think. What created the latest like boom and like the influx of new people into Farcaster were two things. Uh, one of the uh, meme coins, DJ, went big, and there's a tipping mechanism. If I like something that you cast, I can tip you DJ and you just get that. And the the frames technology, which is basically instead of just written text or pictures or images or video and you can actually cast a piece of code it's like a code snippet so you're actually interacting let's say with a tweet if you look at a tweet in Farcaster that that post can have like a little window with code in it so you can have little arrows and it can be like a gallery of pictures you can click on the arrows and and you can, now you can actually mint on a frame so it's a really cool technology and is is something that is being is it is something that is, has been talked about for a long time i want to just mint on the timeline and they actually did it yeah so maybe break this down a little bit mint on a timeline so if we if we see a fee, something in our feed and we want to mint it before or before this technology right how would you go about it doing it like was it possible or would you have to like do some copying and pasting or yeah, it could be just a link right yeah, a link to oh, okay. to, so, the, to manifold or zora right. to link to... takes you out of the app though. exactly that's the whole point you would have to go out of the app to mean something and especially with mobile which is a bit more annoying to connect your wallet and everything now you're like lying on a couch like scrolling on firecast and yeah. you see something you like you, you hit a button on that cast and you mint that thing goes to your wallet 
Okay, it's, so it's beautiful. is my wallet connected then to yes. Farcaster? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, uh, in your profile, you have to go to verified address and make sure to connect your address. You said about getting paid. How to? Well, yes. Getting so, paid in, in what, how, yeah. presumably to your wallet. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, so those are the, the two things that made Farcaster big recently, the, the meme coin DJ and the, the technology of the frames technology. But with all that, what's happening, there are a lot of game like betting games are big there. And so you just keep betting. And if you win, you win, you win some currency that is not even a currency now, but when they turn into a currency, you're going to have some money there. <laughs> even warps. I see the degen approach here. <laughs> yeah. Even warps, which is the native currency of... Uh, okay, I tried this warp. in my app and then it asked me to buy something. And yeah. I was like, oh, I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. No, I buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I get I get nervous if I don't have 10,000 warps. I, I keep 10,000 warps. I don't know what's going to happen to right. that. So warps are not a Farcaster thing? They they are a warp cast thing yeah but like with everything like the protocol was not on chain and slowly they put it on chain and yeah. it's permissionless permissionless and any client can access it now and but like direct message direct casts are not on the protocol layer yet so they're only on warp cast the the currency warps are is not on the yeah uh, so they slowly put things on the protocol, yes. Yeah. but there's, there's still more. Everything is really new and experimental, and it's it's really cool to actually be there and see it happening, you know? That was my feeling. It's the feeling of exper it being experimental, and there's this, like, there's this, like, awkward kind of, like, happiness to, yes. <laughs> to it. Exactly. <laughs> Which is maybe awkward cons considering our normal doom-scrolling environment. Exactly. <laughs> Where you're trying not to engage and not to argue with folks. <laughs> I went through that and I see many people saying the same thing. They go to Twitter and it's like noisy and like fud and everybody like in a bad mood, you know, bad vibes. Then you go to Farcast and yeah. everybody happy. <laughs> I mean, Twitter is definitely unusable at times. And like, e even like the algorithm drives me nuts. I like, I clicked on a picture of princess kate and yeah. then like <laughs> the algorithm is so good like every other post for minutes and minutes was just more news about ah, this fake photo okay. of the royal family yeah. and i'm like oh i know i knew i shouldn't have clicked right yeah <laughs> exactly yeah just i think this week uh rachel was an artist it's just half i think u.s based and new zealand based she she's been there in, she's been on Farcast for three weeks and she already made a huge post thread highlighting why she's so happy on Farcaster. The artists on Farcaster, I can it's very easy to see that they're happy there. You know? People are praising their work and minting their work and it's just a, a cool vibe. You know? like, that's what you want, right? You want to remove that friction for being able to get casual fans not just crypto native nerds to be able to like mint or purchase or support yeah. you right i think so yeah and in, in, in the long run like to have an app that is connected to a crypto wallet that you don't even know that is there you know like, and you can transact and you can do whatever you want and you don't even need to understand the technology so it's about uh six months old and the in January is when they launched this frames technology and I was looking yeah. at the user adoption and there's like this sort yeah. of organic growth and then frames came out and it just yeah. went went viral in terms of the users. Um, you've had a bit more experience on it. Is it going to sur survive? Is it better than what we have? And does it feel actually decentralized? Yes, I think so. I think sometimes I have a difficult time imagining how like non-crypto people are going to get there. But I think that's a goal, and I think that's possible. Because you know? the interface is not that foreign. Right. You're just scrolling and like doing what you've, you you were used to do on Twitter. But you can do way more. You know? And, and you, 
I hope that with time people will value being the owner of your data and your, and your content. And I think that people like incentives, right? If they understand that if I play this game, I get paid. Like I, 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 just for being there and creating channels, I wake up one day and there's like this week, past week, there's like a 1,000 US dollars of a new currency that just dropped, you know, yep. because I'm, of my track record, I, I, I'm all, I have some of that airdrop to me, you know. <laughs> so, uh, and so is that like a Discord channel where you're kind of like a moderator or something? What is that? Yeah, the, so channels in ch channels on Farcasted is like where you should spend most of your time because you find the interest that you look, you find whatever you're looking for and you, and you, and you chat with the people who are, yeah. who share. And it's you like just, a, you just stay there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can think of, I think Twitter has communities, I think it's similar and it will be like a discord channel. And that's where you're going to find your people, your tribe. And just by, by being, um, by creating channels and managing some, channels you, you get some rewards you know because it's so early they like they want to reward people that are making channels i guess do you think that artists are specifically drawn to this because it, it flattens the playing field a little bit so, yeah that's probably the it's probably a good point because it's a new platform so this is a new opportunity you can but or is it that, yeah, yeah, where there's a new thing, there's going to be a new opportunity. Exactly. So if you're early there and like yeah. you're not that, you see some people that had like a couple of thousand followers on Twitter, they have hundreds of thousands of followers on Farcaster. So they obviously were early, they obviously did something right. Yep. But you can easily tell that that thing changed their life. They're in a completely different space now in terms of audience, right? So that's really interesting, and that definitely can happen to artists, I guess, right? Oh, you mentioned also to me that uh, the frames are like enabling e-commerce of yes. sorts. Yeah, like that's pretty That's pretty wild. Yes, it's huge. There are a couple of teams working on frames, e-commerce uh, interfaces to connect to Shopify, or even easier to connect to Coinbase uh, commerce so you uh, you have to exit the frame but it just uh, for now I think transactions are actually coming into frames they're already here but I haven't seen them work yet because you choose the whatever it is the shirt the, 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 the cap and just pay with a transaction on Coinbase commerce and that's yeah. it so yeah I think this is going to be Really interesting too, because it's just started. And it's yeah, I mean, I find that really appealing. Like e-commerce is like, it works pretty well. It's okay. Our credit card info is secure and stuff. But like, give you an example. I see something on, I see something on Twitter. I see a, a book on Twitter that I want to buy. Right. Mm -hmm. it scrolls past my feed. I'm like, that looks interesting. I want to be able to buy the book, and scroll on. I don't want to yeah. have to like the last time I tried. I like, you know, go to the third party site put in all the new info and then find out they don't ship to New Zealand. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I get frustrated, right? I'm like, where's the smooth experience? So yeah. I'm actually quite hopeful that, yeah, we can have sort of a smoother experience. Uh, and if we can do that through Coinbase, I think the mobile version is just set up for Coinbase right now. Is that right? I think so, yeah. Coinbase, Coinbase wallet, yeah. yeah um, actually, that's a very good example. What do you see? You've sort of now been close to a lot of things uh, in terms of blending tech and art and NFTs. What do you think we're going to see in NFTs, perhaps using some of this new technology that uh, isn't so obvious today? Like we've we've sort of we've had the PFP craze. Mm -hmm. um, it seems like Nouns is trying to like really. Uh, sink into the community funding sphere, setting up this treasury, um, being able to redistribute the value, you know, based on this daily NF NFT. Uh, we now have artists who hopefully are going to be make it easier for fans and uh, collectors to mint. Like, is there more that we're going to see? Is it going to get better? 
That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. You hope so. Yeah, I think it would be a, a cool f future. Uh, more people, non-crypto people, like uh, just spending time there and learning about art and and there's a there's a big movement and it's like uh, uh, basically led by Base, which is a layer two from Coinbase. Yep. And which is bring the world on chain. And I think that's a really cool uh, vision. And I think it actually ties up everything that you're talking about together. You know, like uh, maybe a, a more practical example would be the, the vibe and they encourage you to like just mint everything. Okay. So <laughs> mint your podcast. Mint and like an email that you sent to someone. Mint every that really is everything. <laughs> yes, which is the idea of bringing the world on chain. You know, they yeah. want everything in there, every piece of art, every uh, conversation that you have. Like if my proposal, my next proposal passes, for instance, I'll mint a screenshot of that. You know, yeah. like, in a way, it's like documenting history and documenting. Yeah. And yeah. And, if we need to, we can go back and verify it. And in a way that is like permissionless, like trustless, like there's no denying that that happened. You know, like, Jack and, minted his first tweet. Yes, something. Uh, I don't know where it is now, but I think it was one of those things that sold very for very high value, yeah, and then and then exactly. uh, in the eye of the beholder, it has no value now. But yeah, he maybe he was early. <laughs> if you could get funded. Maybe by nouns, maybe not. But to do to do anything, no limits. What what would you be doing? That's a great question. Because I, I'm actually I was funded for a second documentary. Okay. About. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah, I'll yeah, just yeah. give a brief. I'm still working on it yeah. right now. It's Ben, one of the most dedicated and loved members of the nouns community, and that's a question I I ask him, <laughs> <laughs> and we. I, I, we have a lot in common, and my answer is similar to his, which the ideal end game, well, not end game, but the ideal outcome for nouns could be like a, a theme park. Like a, the, they just uh, funded a coffee shop in LA, which I think could be the start of this. It's like a nouns place that you go hang out, you know. Like, I saw I saw a cast about this, and I yeah. okay. Now that you mentioned, I'm like okay. It's so. really cool. They're gonna have the auction uh, on the TV live. Yeah, yeah. And they're gonna have free coffee at nine o'clock when the auction closes. And and the funny thing about the auction is that it drifts in time every day, a couple of minutes or even hours. So some days the auction is like in the middle of the night. Right. For the LA, LA coffee shop, I don't know how they're gonna have that, but anyway, it's a place that you could go learn about nouns, like have like a skate park and have a studio where you can make art or like uh, computers that you can use. You know, like uh, the 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 ideal nouns place would be like a cool place to hang out. Yeah learn about nouns and build stuff and learn and experiment or it could be like a festival a yearly every year in a different place and people gather there you know it's gonna say surely there's like a nouns con invention yeah is, is there not yet not yet there there are some nouns events that happen in the ethereum uh, conferences and other confer NFT conferences there have been. Yeah, many ETH Denver just yes. finished up. And now it's had a huge event there as okay. well. So it was really cool. And in that sense, I was funded for uh, a separate thing, which was really cool, which was the first NFT event in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, where I'm from. And I was able to be funded to go there and give a talk about nouns. And that's probably my biggest contribution to nouns yeah. because that sparked a, a team of builders in Brazil like I've never seen before. And they're really dedicated and they're creating stuff and being funded themselves. And 
spreading, uh, proliferating the meme down there in a, <laughs> in a great way. Well, I mean, that that was what you were doing. You went there yeah, and yeah. <laughs> pro proliferating the meme there. Yeah. There's a great story. JP, which is one of these kids that is doing amazing things, he went to my talk by accident. He sat down because he was waiting for a friend. And when I started talking, his, he, in his mind, he thought exactly what you just told me before. He said, oh, okay, another PFP project. Yeah. <laughs> he was about to leave, you know. And then he stayed, and after the talk, he reached out. We, I came back to New Zealand. We kept talking, like, constantly, and he became, like, a, one of the big builders in Brazil now. Wow, I think, okay, I'm... I'm I'm on board. I'm I'm <laughs> impressed. I'm curious. It's a cool story. Um, we didn't talk much about, but maybe just one more point about this Creative Commons Zero, the mm -hmm. CC Zero licensing, right? Like this this is something that even the CC Zero format is sort of brand new for, under the Creative Commons licensing schemes. Um, and so, from my point of view, academics and people in education are starting to use it more to help encourage others. Uh, I'll use the term ripoff in, in lieu of another yeah. term, but to en encourage others to not worry about w content they're taking, mm -hmm. um, whether it be, you know, notes or slides or lecture videos, these things, because um, we don't want to have any barriers in the way, right? The knowledge belongs yes. to everyone. And that is uh, most of the academics I know, that's the ethos. If, if you find something out that you think is interesting, you want to be able to disseminate it. And CC0 has helped a lot with this, but to, so to me, this really stands out with with the Nouns project, especially when you look at some of the other hiccups along the way with some of the other projects that have sort of granted limited IP rights and said like you can do some That's things, true. but you can't you can't do others. And then, like, what are your thoughts on like the all these projects? Um, coalescing under the Yuga Labs umbrella and and sort of it seems to me like that's like a just turning into another centralized thing that we've already seen yeah like an evil corporation so, I mean yeah no I, I see what you're saying I, I don't know I mean I think I think it's all good I mean if yeah. it's if crypto teams NFT teams like building like if, if they're too big and they're buying lots of other IP, I don't know what to expect, but I hope they they make good in the future. But yes, I'm I'm on team CC zero, a hundred percent. Yeah, um, I'm all for remixing and. At the end of your film, it says this film is CC zero, <laughs> no rights reserved. Yeah, I thought that was beautiful. Yes, that's the idea. I mean, if people want the raw footage and they want to re-edit their own version of the documentary, they can do it, you know. And I think this is best for everyone. Don't get attached to to what you created. You just create more, you know, like let the world remix your stuff. And it's probably a good philosophy, yeah. Because um, I, I mean, and if it's, if it's good and beautiful and or if it's a good product and it works, people are going to do it anyways. And you're just going to get frustrated That's true. by that. Yeah. I was a musician when Napster came around. So I, I lived firsthand uh, what that was. You know, and, I, and I could never be on the side of the, 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 the record labels and the artists that were mad at Napster. And, there's no fighting. This is the future. This is great that people will be able to download my, my music even yeah. if it's for free, you know. And uh, I guess you could say that there has to be a balance of centralized, decentralized, CC0, and owned by a corporation. I guess there's always going to be utility and reasons for both sides. But yeah, I'm. Yeah, very very well put. I was banned by Metallica on that, <laughs> on on Napster. Uh, no way. I remember when my Napster journey came to an end, and I I think I might have moved on to LimeWire <laughs> from from yeah. there. <laughs> was it Donkey something? Yeah. Uh, I have a few rapid fire questions. Sure. Before we wrap up here, okay. So 
Uh, you mentioned that you're from Rio de Janeiro. Yes. So uh, Brazil or New Zealand? Which do you oh. which do you choose? <laughs> both. You choose both. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, programming or music? Oh man, this stuff. Uh, music. Music. Okay. Uh, do you still? Are you still a musician? I mean, no. once a musician, <laughs> always do. You... Yeah. Oh. Oh. I'll go back to it at some point. Okay. Yes. Okay. Drums. <laughs> For now, you're more interested in tech and creating. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Telling stories about techs and art. Uh, last one for you. Who is Satoshi? Who do you think? <laughs> Vitalik. You, th you think he's Vitalik? <laughs> Just no, kidding. No one's ever said that before. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm inclined to think there is a group of people, yeah. maybe. But I don't know. Neither do I. <laughs> All right, Leo, thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you, Jeff. It's a pleasure. Thanks for joining us, folks. Look out for the next episode of the Blockchain New Zealand podcast, probably in the same spot you found this one. Cheers. Cheers.